Okay, so first thing we're going to go into is bottom-up development. So this is the idea where you're developing from subcomponents toward an assembly. So in conceptual design, we usually do top-down design. We're thinking about the whole solution, how everything would work together. And then we aim toward breaking it down into smaller components through things like functional decomposition. In bottom-up development, you're really focused on each individual subcomponent of your design. And the design of those individual components will add up to your overall system or your overall project. In order to do that, you have to really think about how those components will interact. How does information come in or out? How are forces translated through something? So you're thinking about each individual component. So you can think if you're at a large car manufacturer and you're in charge of developing the transmission, you're going to need to know what systems interface with that and how those systems are designed so that you can design your piece to work just right. So you can think about maybe you're developing the fuel container in a car. Well, it needs to fit in a certain area, and it's pretty flexible about exactly what shape it could take. So knowing what space you have available to you um, would help you in that design. That's a good way to think about bottom-up development. So establishing those interfaces will really allow you to design each subcomponent independently, and that helps a lot with allowing all of your teammates to work together toward a larger project if each person can take responsibility for one or more subcomponents that will then go into your overall assembly. So this is a useful way to get your whole team involved in the design process. All right, so if we start to look at what those interfaces might be, we can give some examples from different types of projects. So if you're looking at a mechanical project, you want to think about how the different physical parts connect with one another. So what are those connection points? Think about what types and what fasteners might be used. So are you going to hold this thing together with rivets or bolts? Are you going to weld something? And you also want to think about some of the forces that are being um, handled by each element in your design so that you can design them to be able to handle the forces being applied to the system. So you can think of each subcomponent as like its own little black box that has inputs and outputs and has to do some job. Likewise, with an electrical system, you can think about for a given subcomponent, how much voltage or current is going to be supplied or received by a particular component? What types of signals are going to be sent? Is it digital or analog? What do they look like? How many inputs or outputs might you have? And then going into software, you might think about, OK, um, what does each function in this software do? And how does it communicate with the main program? You might think about what the inputs and outputs are for each system and how many. So those are kind of the types of things you want to understand so that you can understand for the subcomponent you're designing exactly what are the constraints. So we're going to do an example here from the Camp Riley team and their sailboat project. So the sailboat project was to take this um, small sailboat they had at Bradford Woods, the camp that the team works with, and make it so that someone who did not have use of their hands and arms could steer the boat. So they want to be able to control the rudder um, with any of the campers who might show up. So this team took this project on. You may have seen the boat in our labs. And if they want to break that overall design down into subcomponents, um, they came up with something that looks like this. So you can see they have um, a sort of an overall schematic of what the project looks like. And this is for control of the rudder. So they have a joystick and a sip and puff user interface. So they're thinking about exactly how does the user interface with this. They have an Arduino which is going to control the system. They have a regulator for the Arduino and one for a servo. And then there's a battery that powers the whole project and then the servo motor. So all of those things combined to be able to control the steering. So that's kind of how they broke down their project into subcomponents and looked at what connects with what. And then if they look at this um, going into a little bit different perspective, they say, OK, the user is going to operate either the joystick or the sip and puff. And in response to that, we're going to have a user interface that gives feedback so that you know exactly what the rudder is doing. So that's giving you feedback to the user. And also, you'll have the microprocessor that takes the information from the user, translates it to the servo motor, and the servo motor actually controls the rudder. So you can see, looking at this from both perspectives, how they broke those down into subcomponents. And then you could design each subcomponent, understanding what needs to come in and out. So to recap on bottom-up development, you're really looking at dividing your overall concept into subcomponents um, so that each person on your team can understand exactly what they're responsible for. 
you can build all of those detailed components together and know that they'll work together when you get to an assembly. It's really critical to understand the connections between the subsystems to be able to assemble them at the end. And this is the really key time for your design lead or maybe your project manager to really keep tabs of everybody in the team know exactly what they're working on and make sure they're sticking to those agreed interfaces so that you know everything will come together well in the end. So now taking a look at your turn, what I want you to do for your homework on this section is just to draw a simple block diagram of all the subsystems in your project, much like the first diagram I showed you of the sailboat. Think about what you would need to know to replace or redesign one subsystem independently. So say, what if I'm assigned to this one piece and I'm going to design it from scratch? What do I need to know? What forces are acting on it? what things are going to connect to it, how does the user interact with it. So consider all of those elements that would go into that system. And if your team has reached this stage, review your do design document and verify that all the subsystems are correctly recorded, that you have something like an overall schematic showing what they all are.